Two weeks ago, some clumsy oaf tripped and fell on his own sidewalk, sprained both wrists. I, I, I'm okay, honest, really. I just, between trying to turn too soon and cutting up that ash tree, it set me back a little bit. So I, I've decided to take uh, uh, several days away from the shop and I've not been able to get anything done. So for that reason, uh, this is a re-edit of a video from a year, year and a half ago, I think. Uh, or for whatever reason, it didn't get nearly the kind of viewing that I thought it should have. So I've, in this edit, I'm cutting out all the music and I'm trying to shorten it as best I can. It's over 300 hours of, of footage going into this. So I'm going to try to keep it under 30 minutes. It's not a turning, but I think you'll enjoy it. I enjoyed making it. It was a challenge. Stay tuned and watch with me if you don't mind. In this episode, I'm going to make a miniature version of an acoustic guitar. This was a request from a customer. His favorite wood is Cocobolo, so I'm surprising him. I took a 7 8 inch pin blank in Cocobolo. I cut it in half and I cut those in half again and I book matched it. So I've already got this glued up. This is about the size it's going to be. I think I've got it measured at about 10 inches. So this book matched Cocobolo is going to be this top of the guitar. I've got some quarter sawn oak and I'm going to cut it up and glue it up to make the hollow, the, the frame part. It's going to be hollow inside. <clears throat> and for the back, I'm going to take this piece of curly maple. It's really pretty. It's got some really cool figure in it because of that knot. But this is just big enough to go on the back of the guitar. So this will be the back. This will be the front. So let's get at it. Fat boy forgot to hit record again, folks. Sorry. So I've got my pattern cut out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take Right now I'm going to go over to the bandsaw and I'm going to cut that maple piece off and resaw it to the right thickness. And then I will temporarily glue the front and the back together and then tape this onto them and cut them out. So let's go to the bandsaw. Look at that figure. That's pretty stuff. This is double-sided duct tape I got at Walmart. This stuff is, man, it's sticky. It works great. This is too thin to reliably run through my, my drum sander. It's pressure sensitive, so the, the more you push it, the stronger the bond. It's flat. It's melamine, and I trust it. Stick this down there. Now we'll go to the sander. Look how pretty that is. Now I'll flip it over and clean up the other side. Nice and flat, I think that'll do. I'm going to start by milling up some stock to make up the sides. It's going to be bigger and bulkier than a normal guitar, but scale-wise, but I'm just trying to make it hollow, not an actual guitar. Now the idea here is to make high-angled scarf-type cuts so the glue holds better. Once I sandwich it, it'll hold it well enough because the veneers that I cut are thick enough, they're about an eighth of an inch. But it'll also help it to look more seamless and the steeper the angle of the cut, the less likely you're going to have end grain showing up. So that's the goal here. We'll see if I'm successful. Again, is it going to work or be a dismal failure? I'm not sure which yet. I reckon this here is going to work, Bill. Yeah, I know. I've got to get me a proper wood ice.
Now I'll let that set up a few hours, tape it down to my black laminate, run it through the sander to make sure it's nice and even before I put the veneers on. And I'll be back. I ran it through the sander, turned it over, just glued it back down. I'll run it through one more time on this side, and then I'll start building the guitar. And it's flat. Take this up here. And then I take the front and back back together and tape the picture on it. Now I'm going to cut this outside the lines so I'll know how to size it when I put the middle in it. I cut my tape off so I'm going to tape this back together again. Any alignment issues or misalignment issues as the case may be. I'm going to use this Forstner bit to cut out just where the inlay is going to go and then I'm going to inlay it with a colored epoxy and then after that's done then I'll drill the hole out. That was unfortunate but I have extra copies. So the inlay is going to go in this recess. It's not going to take a whole lot of epoxy to fill it. I just have to decide, do I want to use black? I could use a black metallic to go in here, but I want something that's really going to contrast and really shine in this coca bolo. So which do you like best to accent the cocoa? Yeah, you're a lot of help. I think this one. Anyway, I'll let this set up and cure when it's all dry. I'll hot glue it down to my board, run it through the sander so it's all nice and level. Then I'll go back in with another Forstner bit, smaller, so I leave that ring on the outside. This is way too much work for what he wanted. <laughs> but I've told you before, I have a tendency to overbuild things. He wanted a simple guitar cut out, made it look like a guitar to sit on his desk. This is nowhere near simple, but I took it as a challenge. So here's my crude frame. Yeah, it's ugly, but it's going to be inside. Nobody's going to see it. Now, I'm going to cut a piece of this off and rip it. I'll put one above the hole and one below the hole to just to sturdy it up. Actually, I don't need one above the hole. I need two below the hole. I don't know if you can see that ledge. There's just a little bit of like reveal. About a 64th of an inch on each side. And I'll take that down smooth with a file or I don't know, sandpaper, something. But I'll give it that bow when I put the skins on it. And then I'll let this set up for a while and go on to something else. I found me a really pretty, found me a really pretty piece of curly cherry. Just a scrap I had. I mean, it's got some really tight curl in it. Nicely figured, I think that'll do for the neck. And I'm not gonna put, I've decided I'm getting crazy carried away with this, so I'm just, I'm not going to put a, a veneer on top of the cherry. I'm going to let that cherry shine. I will cut the fret grooves, and I'm going to use some fine wire for the fret. So I've got that glued to my tape now. I'm going to go over to the bandsaw and cut out the rough shape. So that's what we're going to do. Almost got ahead of myself again. Before I cut this out, I need one side pretty much straight so that I can cut my curve on my neck. So what I'm going to do, yeah, I'm going to cut one side out on the bandsaw. Okay, so now this is my profile for the neck of the guitar. I'm going to take this to the bandsaw and rough cut my dimensions. This is where it overhangs the front of the guitar. I'm going to go rough cut this on the bandsaw, then I'm going to temporarily tape it back together and cut out this other side. So let's do that. Take my tape off. 
There's my scraps, and there's my rough cut. Let me go refine it a little bit on the sander. Okay, hit it on the oscillating spindle sander with the belt on it. This is my rough shape of my neck. Not too bad. I need to round this off. So I'll do that. I'll round that off and, and then start shaping this, like I said, with Dremels and whatnot. It's just, it's going to look cool. I'm digging it. I am a digging it. And I've been out here all day and it's quitting time. Yeah, I'm going to let this, even though this is 500 epoxy, I'm going to let this set up a good 24 hours before I run it through the sander. That's going to be pretty. So, fat boy, what are you going to use for strings and tuning pegs, etc.? You're just going to have to wait and see. I got some junk. I'm going to go all oh, make it so fun, y'all. going to make Sophie proud. I guarantee it. Now, got the sun marks out of it. <clears throat> That'll glue up nice. My calibrated eye says it's close to enough. Close to enough, as my uncle would used to would say. What do you think? I don't know about y'all, but I can sand this up with some fine sandpaper now. I think this looks close enough like a guitar neck to me. Don't you? This is so good. I'm, 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 I amazed myself, actually. And right now, this is just so good that I'm afraid if I keep going today, I'm gonna screw it up. So, I'm quitting while I'm ahead. Is that looking guitarish? I'm digging it. I am digging it. I gotta figure out what, I'm gonna make a stand for it too. I don't know what I'm gonna use yet. All right, guys. Now let that set, smooth it out, sand it again, and then drill it out to its final diameter. Now let's go work on the neck. This is the wire I'm going to use for my frets. So what I need to do is make sure it's all nice and straight. <laughs> this is going to be a pain in the butt. And this bigger one for where the strings are going to go. So before I glue all those in place, dye the fretboard the final color it's going to be. Because I want the fretboard to be a little bit darker. For the tuning pegs, I'm going to use these old electronics pins. I don't know how well you can see it, but I've flattened one. I think it'll be okay. For the risers coming out of it, I'm going to use the other end of this connector. The frets are glued on. They look pretty good. Now I'll take a Dremel with a cut off and once this cures for several hours, I'm gonna let it sit overnight before I mess with it again. And I'll cut these off with a cut off wheel on a Dremel tool and start sanding, removing the excess epoxy. Okay, got to all the excess epoxy glued off. So now I can glued off. I got the excess epoxy glued off. Oh boy. Anyway, excess epoxy's gone. I'll let these set up overnight. I'm not going to do any more today. It's Halloween. All right, I've got the cutoff wheel and the Dremel tool. Now I'm going to carefully cut these off at an angle, hopefully. Ah. 
Okay, now I'm going to glue this together, but before I do that, I'm going to get my clamps ready and I'm going to wipe this down with acetone to remove the oils so that I get a good stick and it flashes off nearly immediately. But you see, that's not sawdust, that's oil. Okay, I'm going to leave this set overnight to make sure I get a really good bond before I start finalizing the shape. Looks like I'm waiting overnight for glue to dry everywhere. So I guess I'll be back tomorrow. While I'm waiting for glue to dry, I'm going to start trying to pick out some wood to make this guitar stand. I found some spalted hickory that I think might look really nice. I'm going to use this piece for the upright, thin it down some because it's just way too thick. This piece I'm going to cut I'm gonna, on my bandsaw. I'm going to split it and find some book match that I can lay open for this. No thumbs in the way. Okay. Now, while they're stuck together, I'm going to go cut these out on the bandsaw. Okay, got them cut out. Now I'm going to go finalize the shape on the belt sander. And there you have it. It's book matched. Put this down. Because this will come up and the glue won't stick to it. Let that set up. Now I got glue drying everywhere. So I'm done for the day. I'll be back tomorrow. Now I have to cut the grooves in this piece for the strings. Cutting them is going to be easy. Getting them spaced right, <laughs> it's a different story. Now it's time to unclamp this. You can click on my Amazon affiliate link down below. Anything you buy there, we get a few pennies for. Doesn't cost you any more. And it really helps us out. You don't know how much. Thanks. One of the things I realized when I was, last night when I was asleep, I do my best thinking when I'm asleep. I was supposed to, before I glued this together, I was supposed to cut the notch for that. Now I have to figure out how to do that. But before I get that far, I'm going to get this sanded to shape on my oscillating spindle sander. And there it is. Looking pretty good. I've got to see if I can hide that crack, uh, that line a little better. I think it's separated because there's a slight bow in those ribs inside. It separated the edge just a little bit. So I think some thin super glue put in there and then sanded back with the dust in it will help. We'll see. I'm going to take the old one and put it back on here because I'm just going to ruin it with CA. Should give me enough sand and dust to fill these cracks because I'm going to sand it wet. That dude it, see, ruins the sandpaper, but it gets the job done. Just a little trick for you. Man, look at that pretty grain. That's going to be gorgeous. That cocoa looks pretty good too. Let me measure this and get the slot cut for the neck if I figure out how to do it. I can't chisel it out, and the hard part's going to be getting this, taking care of this without destroying the edge of that, where that epoxy is. You know, I should have thought of this earlier. <sighs> small chisel would be nice, but I don't have one that small. Maybe my set of carving tools. How about this one? I think we'll take this little one and see where we can go. I 
I've sanded all my gray out for the gray ring, so I'm gonna have to fix that too. Oh well, it's always something. Time to work on the guitar strings. I'm using small wire. I've already made the tuning peg out of some brass pins. Yeah, I know you can barely see that. I'm not finished sizing these yet. These will be the uprights. The bridge in the picture is a little bit bigger than this, but I think this will work just fine. So let's go find an appropriate material. Okay, I'm just gonna use a piece of cherry and color it black. I've got it shaped. Yes, I forgot to hit the record button again. All right, so now I'm gonna shape the ends of the wires that'll go on the back side of the bridge. That just might work. So I wrapped it around this little pin about four times. And that looks very close to how the end of a guitar string looks. But what I will do is lock this around the back of the bridge and glue it down. And then I'll wrap the wire around the ends of the, the tuning pegs up on the top of the neck. Right. Okay. I've cut a piece of double-sided tape and I've cut this off of the picture. Because what I need to do is lay this on here and stick it down to cut the grooves for the strings in the neck. So I've got to make sure that these fit. And I'm going to have to resort to the Dremel. But I've got them marked. It ain't pretty, but it'll work. Well, so far I think it's looking pretty guitarish. Still have to glue the neck onto the body. And I made the bridge. Got the wires done. I think I'm gonna drill the holes in the neck and glue the tuning pegs in first. find the right size drill now. Okay, I've got them drilled out. Now I just need to adjust them for length and glue them in. Before I glue those in, I'm going to do one final sand. Okay, got the neck sanded to 300. Let that side set up and I'll do the other. Now let this sit up for a while and cure up. Out of the way and away from vibration. I've got the rough shape that I want drawn out on here. And I've got the shape drawn out over here. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this out. Once I get this side cut out, tape the pieces back together, turn it over, and cut this out. So let's go to the bandsaw. Now before I start shaping this on the sander, I've got to stabilize some of this stuff with CA. In the 
meantime, I'm going to make this bridge black. That's the shape I'm going for. Now I've got a, a groove side of this for that to fit into. So it'll sit like so. Before we get too carried away here, I want to make sure that the guitar will hang from it. It will just hang from it. Now I can do the finish sanding on this. Drill my holes for my mounting pegs. I don't really need to put a clamp on this. I can just hold it for, I don't know, 15, 20 seconds. And it should be strong enough. But just in case. Well, I'm getting closer. Let that cure for a good 24 hours before I spray it with light. Okay, I rigged up this little clamp in a vise. I thought about using epoxy or something to keep these coils from coming undone. And then I thought, no. Let's just solder them. So that's what we're going to attempt to do. I noticed that this stand, once put together, which it isn't yet, camps too far forward. So I need to raise it up about that high. So to do that, I'm going to add these to the bottom, or pieces that I cut from here. To the bottom of this so i'm going to go rough out some on the bandsaw glue them in place and then i can finish sand it up okay i've done except for putting the strings on I've done everything to the guitar that I'm going to do before finishing. So it's time to glue the neck to the body, finally. I've been waiting for this day to get here. Uh, I'm going to use black epoxy just to fill any gaps or joints and uh, it'll make it look like a feature. Tomorrow I hope to get the strings on, finish sand the stand, and get everything ready for, for finish. Well, if you remember, I soldered the coils of the strings so they wouldn't come unraveled. And I've been sitting here trying to figure out how I was going to mount all those strings individually underneath the bridge. And then it dawned on me. I could run a small piece of copper wire through the center of each of the strings and then solder these all together on that copper wire, trim it, and then I only have to glue in, or I can epoxy the whole piece in after it's nice and cool. So that's what I'm going to do. Certainly not the prettiest soldering job I've ever done, but in my defense, I'm using plumber's solder on electric wire. <laughs> I'm 
That'll do. By uh, cranky, I think that's going to work. Looks pretty crappy right now because the strings are all... But when I do the final adjustment when I'm putting the epoxy in here in just a minute, I'll straighten all that out. Let's mix up some epoxy. Now I'm going to let this cure overnight and then I'll come back with a Dremel tool and I'm going to knock the tops off of these, get them all flat and the same size or same height. Like any oil, this can be used, this is a, it's a, a not just a penetrating varnish, it, I mean finish, it penetrates into the pores a little, not a whole lot, but it really pops the grain and I like it. You can use just this like you do wood tongue oil or boiled linseed oil and lay multiple coats on. But I'm only going to use one coat just to pop this grain. Now I'll come back in tomorrow and hit this with some 4 op. I'm going to mix up a little colored epoxy. Okay, what I'm going to do is just dip the ends of these and make a little ball. Okay, that should be good. Now I'll let that dry for a little while and come back and I'll be ready to spray the finish. I decided to better keep the strings aligned. I'm just laying them in thick CA along the fretboard. I may end up doing it all the way down. I haven't made up my mind yet. I probably will, just because I think it'll look more uniform. But I want to let this up here dry first. When I last left you, I had decided to use thick CA and glue these down. And I did, and it worked. I don't have any pressure on this clamp. I just brought it up, didn't squeeze on it at all. Just enough to get the strings down flat. Now I'll let this set for several hours, make sure it cures good. I let this set all day yesterday, all afternoon yesterday. and. All right, I'll hit these with three or four coats over the next couple of hours and then I let it cure for a few days. So here it is folks, in my light box. I've already taken the stills, the guitar finished. I just want to get in here and show you some of the detail. Book match coca bolo, curly cherry neck. The strings pretty much cover up the curl on the front. But all in all, I'm actually quite happy with it. Burnt my logo in the back. So thank, thank you all for watching. I appreciate it. You, you don't know how much. I really do. And thank you for sticking with me. I appreciate your patience. And I'll try to get some turning out real quick. Well, I say real quick, as soon as these heal up. So I'll, I'll get there as quick as I can. If you like this video, please like, uh, share. I mean, share it with people you think might like it. That really helps us out a ton. I really appreciate it. Y'all come back.